Unless we are alone on the proverbial deserted island, there's going to be other people, right? In fact, one of the greatest challenges to living the spiritually integrated life is other people. Would you agree? (laughs) So the who of spiritual integration involves us and everyone else in the world. Every person on this planet is intimately involved in our very own spiritual integration because people are everywhere and we cannot get away from them. Everywhere we go, people bother us. They offend us. They hurt us. They disappoint us. They anger us. But they also bring us so much joy, don't they? And happiness. And so many gifts. If it weren't for other people, who would we spend time with or laugh with or love? And who would love us? My heart is so full when I just stop at any given moment in a day and I think about all the people I love, the people here, the people in my family, my friends in different places in the world. I love them and they love me and I know you feel the same way, right? Gosh, there's nothing that fills your heart so deeply as thinking and envisioning your loved ones and the role they play in our lives. We all at least have a few people who would do anything for us. I was talking to my best friend Carol in New York last night. I had an email from her, and she said, uh, I'll be in the country until tomorrow morning. Please call me before 11 Eastern. I thought, oh, she's leaving the country. I need to call her. So I called, and I was frantic because it was already 7.45 our time. I had a 15-minute window. I said, oh, I'm so glad I caught you before you left the country. She said, well, you could have called me tomorrow in the city. I said, oh, that country. <laughs> At her country house, not in Manhattan. So. But she's one of the people I could rely on for anything. We all have people who would do anything for us, who would jump in front of a train for us. And sometimes this actually works out really nicely because sometimes those are the people we want to throw in front of the train anyway. So it's convenient. But in all seriousness, aren't there times when there is a delicate balance between loving people and wanting to throttle them? Yes? There is. Okay. But simply learning to tolerate them is not enough. Tolerance is not enough anymore. The spiritually integrated person understands that in loving others, that beyond tolerance, there's acceptance. And beyond acceptance, there is embracing. And beyond embracing, there is an exquisite level of understanding, compassion, and love that can only be defined as grace. That's where I want to live all the time, but it's not easy, and I'm actually not that good at it. Not in the moment, anyway. I can get there, but often in the moment, I am not that good at it. Sometimes tolerance is all I can muster, and sometimes tolerance is better than the alternative. I had a friend over recently. This is someone I greatly admire and deeply love, and that day she was on my last nerve. I don't know. Something was not right, but she was annoying and inconsiderate and even downright rude, I have to say. And then she broke one of my wine glasses. Mm -hmm. And just when I was about to say, Hookah, I'm going to cut you. (laughs) Guess what I said instead? Would you like some chamomile tea? How do we get to the chamomile tea bypassing any threats of violence, even if they only exist in our heads. How do we get there? What kind of system do we need to put in place in order to treat others better? Last month, Reverend Lacey did a summer class on a happy pocket full of money by David Cameron Jacondi. It was wonderful. I was only able to attend the final class, but it was filled with wisdom and insight. I just loved it. And one of the illustrations Reverend Lacey used in this prosperity course was the idea of come as a little child. 
meaning we approach prosperity from a place of innocence and happy expectancy, and the willingness to pick ourselves up and try it again if we do fall down. It was great, come as a little child. And we spent a good bit of time talking about this idea. And it had an effect on me. I kept thinking about it throughout the week. And then it occurred to me, what if we did this, but what if in the process we also treat others as if they are little children? What would happen? What would it feel like if we treated everyone in our lives with the same level of compassion, care, and love that we so easily and generously shower on children? What if we did that? I actually know someone who does this. How many of you enjoy having root canals? (laughs) Other than Glenn. How many of you enjoy having root canals? Okay, not one person. That's a crazy question, right? But my endodontist, Dr. Jack Isaacs in Fremont, Fremont, he wants, he makes you actually want to have a root canal even if you don't need one. (laughs) It's the craziest thing. He is so kind and so loving and so compassionate that People can't wait to get in his chair. It's like, you know what, do whatever you want. Just let me be in your presence. He treats all his patients like little children. It doesn't matter how old they are. I had two root canals recently, and when it became clear that I needed to have the second one, I was a little distraught. And he put his hand on mine, and he said, don't worry, when you come back in, I will baby you. And he did. He did, and he turned one of life's most dreaded experiences into one of pure nurturing, and it was wonderful. So now I hold Dr. Isaacs up as my example of how to treat other people. Now, I'm not as good at it as he is, and God knows I'm not as well compensated. (laughs) But I'm working on both of those areas. As spiritually integrated individuals, we treat others well by allowing our knowledge, our practice, and our application to assimilate as unity, compassion, and love. Okay, I'm going to see if you've been paying attention. Let's review. What is spiritual integration? Actively living a principle-centered life. The rest of them, you're on your own. When does spiritual integration take place? Where does spiritual integration take place? Who is involved in our spiritual integration? Everybody. Everybody. Excellent. This brings us to the why. Why is spiritual integration important or necessary? I mean, why should we even bother? Why? Because... By consciously living as spiritually integrated individuals, we are satisfying our nature. We're expressing our divinity. We are glorifying God within us and fulfilling our destiny. Why? Because the what, when, where, who, and why are all one thing. When we integrate our knowledge, practice, and application, we are living as we were designed to be manifesting spirit in every aspect of our experience, of our existence, of our being. There is a whole universe, infinite, eternal, glowing inside of us, merely awaiting our recognition of it so it can radiate out from us to the world. God is all there is. We are all one with it and with each other. Now is the only time and here is the only place. And this is the truth, and it is perfectly magnificent, and so are you, and so it is. Namaste.